I hated the Barbie movie, <laughs> which is unfortunate because the trailer, to be honest, looked wholesome and fun. As a girl who grew up with Barbie, I was kind of looking forward to it. That was the first trailer. But then the second trailer came along and the 30 year old moviegoer in me was like, hold up. Something's not right here. I've seen too much in like the seven years of like Hollywood, the little messages and shit they like to sneak into films and well, not so sneak into films. My like not at all secret gay agenda. I know that I was the only Mexicano working alongside a bunch of white boys. What does this have to do with you being a lesbian? And you're just another man taking credit for a woman's work. I know socialism is a charged word. You stole it. Then you stole it. Then I stole it. It's called capitalism. Snow White. That is not going to be us. saved by the prince. And she's not going to be dreaming about true love. I remember my grandmother saying to me, I don't care what they tell you in school. Cleopatra was black. What the fuck is this? There were certain red flags that came up in the second trailer that slipped past me. If you love Barbie, this movie is for you. <laughs> well... I should hope so. If you hate Barbie, this is for you. What do you mean by that? And if, you know, like at first I took that innocently enough, like, okay, maybe what that means is that this movie is so good. Even like the biggest Barbie hater would just bow down to this fucking film. They have no choice but to love it. Bang! Well, it most certainly is a feminist film. Barbie is a complicated icon. There's ways in which she's incredible and amazing and ahead of her time and then also she's a completely unrealistic body type that nobody could ever reach. We have to be upfront and let you know that we're not going to shy away from the problematic parts of this. We have this amazing scene where Barbie goes to the real world and has this encounter with a young teen girl who just like rips her to shreds. But it was such an important scene to have. You want to have the character who is voicing those things that people have found problematic over the years. What the fuck y'all got? Damn! That's not what it means. That's not what it, no. The cast and crew made it their mission to let you know that this movie is for everyone. It's feminist in a way that includes everyone. I think it's also a film that makes everyone feel like they're welcome. There genuinely is something for everyone. Like, hey, it's a big party, everyone's welcome. I think it's gonna be a movie that all audiences enjoy. I can't imagine anyone going to see this and not enjoying it. Are you sure about that? The actors seem very comfortable with talking about it as a feminist film. I mean, I think to... to whatever that sort I'm of- I'm gonna try getting like, it out. It's also a humanist film. And I think the reason why people didn't pick up on all this shit earlier is because the marketing campaign for this film was brilliant. They kept it light and fluffy. They didn't expose how deep the film was going to be until its release. Very smart thing to do. But now that it's out, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so to summarize, when they say this movie is for everyone, it's for people who love Barbie, but not really, we'll get to that. And it's for people, specifically for people who hate Barbie, which means it caters to both fucking audiences. A film that they were hoping would like boost the Barbie brand because that virus that shall not be named kind of was tanking their business for a while. And judging from current reports, it seems that now Mattel is having a bout of buyer's remorse. In spite of the billion dollars they've made and surpassing the dark fucking night. I'm kind of pissed about that. Is it woke? Is it a deconstruction of a beloved IP? The answers to all these questions is yeah, business as usual. It's no different from Dial of Destiny, TLJ. Please, huh? Just leave me here, just leave me. Go away. We really need to get to the bottom of why this character characters and why the charactering that that character characters is wrong. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. It starts exactly how a Barbie movie should. Bleak nothingness with some text. <sighs> Already there's like red flags. It's like tiny red flags. That transitions into a lame 2001 A Space Odyssey reference. There's a point that's made in the film that kind of makes this look even more pretentious. Like I said, we'll get to it. We get narration from Helen Mirren. For years, children have only had baby dolls to take care of. The girls who played with them could only ever play at being mothers, which can be fun, at least for a while anyway. Ask your mother. So anyway, little girls who were dragged to see this, your mother resents you. Barbie! <laughs> so we got rid of like childish things like motherhood and prostrated ourselves to the great 
Barbie. And, you know, yeah, it's a little creepy having this really tall Margot Robbie wink at the camera. All these children surrounding her, staring up her Barbie pocket. Yeah, it's more, like, eerie than funny. It's like, why did you do this? <laughs> For anything other than the reference, we lead into a clumsy transition to the Barbie logo. She introduces us to all the different Barbies. Barbie is all of these women, and all of these women are Barbie. Thanks to Barbie, all problems of feminism and equal rights have been solved. The what is that joke? Like, ha ha ha, see, Barbie didn't cure the whole world of sexism. Like, yeah, we know. <laughs> we know. Barbie is supposed to symbolize what can be possible. See, like, when the movie starts out catering to the people who hate the brand, it's not a good sign. We're calling out the fucking idiots who thought Barbie was gonna fix everything. Like, nobody thought Barbie was gonna fix everything. Nobody. And if you did, you kinda don't need to be anywhere near a voting booth. It's also implied that the Barbies unironically believe this, despite the fact that they are portrayed as intelligent, competent women. The Nobel Prize goes to Barbie. I worked very hard, so I deserve it. I deserve this! See, that means the movie's for everybody, because you're trying to play it both ways, as if nobody's going to pick up on the fact that they're being manipulated. And then we're introduced to Margot Robbie's Barbie, and it's so good. Everybody knows that Aqua's Barbie Girl song should be playing in the sequence. I'm guessing it didn't make the cut, and it has something to do with Mattel suing Aqua for copyright infringement over the song, just for mentioning the Barbie brand. And then lambasted them for the song being too inappropriate, despite the fact that they later on bought the rights to the song and let Nicki Minaj sample it, which of course turned into a much more appropriate song. But he spank me when I get bad. The way can be killing shit got me yelling out like the scream house. Get the pussy so cold, we just chilling out. And I throw it back so he losing it. Yeah, I know the trick, so I got him brick. Yeah, they know who hit me and Bobby, bitch. Anyway, getting back to the film. The song uh, actually playing in this scene, however, is by Lizzo. <laughs> when I wake up in my own Stick a banana in a stripper and force it on my home girls. <laughs> <laughs> and through Barbie's point of view, we see how Barbie land works. Women are doing everything, even jobs they would not be caught dead doing in the real world. If that was really a mirror, you see a perfect smile. Why isn't that really a mirror? Part of a Barbie playset would be some simulation of a mirror. I mean, she's surrounded by all this glass-related shit, but there's no mirror. I mean, I mean is, that, is that the deep commentary we're supposed to get from this scene? Oh my god, Barbie prevented girls from actually seeing themselves. The oppressive bitch that is Barbie. <laughs> is that what that is? Is that what that is? Barbie playsets did have elevators. They even showed this in one of the Toy Story films. So like her going down a slide, I mean... Whatever. I mean, they could be nitpicks, but at the same time, it's why, like, why didn't you just implement the elevator? I pretty much made two requests to Greta. A slide that goes from her bedroom to her pool, because that's my dream in life, and a mermaid Barbie. And of course, we've got Dua Lipa <laughs> as our mermaid Barbie. Wow. And I certainly have a slide that goes from my bedroom down to my pool. And it was so fun. Literally, dreams coming true. That ought to do it. Thanks very much, bitch. This is what I don't like about this sequence, is that they could be doing a lot more creatively. This is a specific way that kids play with Barbies. Like, you see the commercials, she kind of like bounces across the screen like, hey, Barbie, because she can't walk normally, duh. But in the movie, she's just kind of like walking like a supermodel robot. Boring. It reminds me so much of how Bill Condon did the camera work for the Beauty and the Beast remake. It's just like facing the front, uh, front again, front, front, front. The set design and all that, the atmosphere looks great. I'm not taken away from that. But in terms of camera work and the activity of what's going on in the scene, it's kind of lifeless. Helen Mirren comes back with the narration. When you're playing with a Barbie, she doesn't just walk down the stairs. You just pick her up and put her wherever you want her to go. I'm so sorry to Helen Mirren, but I just, I hate this movie and I'm being petty as hell. Like, okay, that's good. But that and the feet thing, that's the only time childhood play and doll mechanics are actually featured in the film and utilized in a creative way. That's it. Like, that's, that's fucking it. I'm failing to see the mind-blowing creativity this film supposedly has. So Barbie's on her way to whatever fucking place. She drives past uh, Midge, who's the pregnant friend, who we are told was discontinued by Mattel because a pregnant Barbie would just be weird. 
Why? Who the fuck knows? And she comes off very weird and needy and desperate. Like, look at me! Look at me! Look at me! <laughs> and Barbie cringes and gives her a pity wave. It's like, and then she start to notice a theme. But we'll get to that. And we find out Barbie Land has a president, congressional hearings, they have a white house. Well, sorry, a pink house. Oh, and look, amputee Barbie in the corner right there. A Barbie with a robot arm. That's totally cool. But a pregnant Barbie... That's just fucking strange. <laughs> Pregnancy, something women do all the time. Strange, but missing a fucking limb. <laughs> oh boy. They have award ceremonies for their accomplishments. And oh look, Barbie with a hijab on. Hijarby. And that's a real doll, by the way. That's a real Barbie. Hijarby. Abusive husband not included. This is where it gets a little fucking weird plot wise. Each Barbie has a child playing with it. So everything you're seeing is through the imagination of a child. But then there's this scene. This makes me emotional and I'm expressing it. I have no difficulty holding both logic and feeling at the same time. And it does not diminish my powers. It expands them. If that ain't some Twitter shit. <laughs> Remember, these dolls are being played with by children. They wait. What? I'm sorry. What child speaks that way? Anyway, let's skip to Barbie at the beach and we're introduced to Ryan Gosling's Ken. The best part of the film as far as I'm concerned. And I think a lot of people agree. That is the only thing that I've heard people talk about since the film's release, which is very funny considering how much the movie tries to bitch him out. Barbie has a great day every day, but Ken only has a great day if Barbie looks at him. I don't give a damn doll or not. The movie would like us to think that Ryan Gosling would have any trouble attracting a female. And I'm just like, no, <laughs> this, is, this is not even like ironically funny. It's just like, no, do it over, <laughs> do, do it over. Hi, Barbie. Ugh. I can. That's my reaction whenever I see C. Mulu. I think Kens are, are meant to represent parts of masculinity that are considered traditionally toxic. As a boy that was raised, I think, at a time where colors were for some reason gendered, pink wasn't something that I had a lot of exposure to. I'm just so grateful to explore my pinkness and, and sit in that and own that and just <laughs> go away. Also another nitpick, but it does take me out of the film when I can see the actors razor bumps, receding hairlines and five o'clock shadows. Unless they're all malfunctioning cool shave Kens. They end up doing this thing where they're in a perpetual state of greeting. Like, hi Barbie, hi Ken, hi Barbie, hi Ken, hi Barbie. Hi. It's annoying. It's not wholesome or it's just annoying. It's just fucking annoying. And Ken wants to impress Barbie. So he goes head first into plastic water for no other reason than to humiliate himself because we need this character to be humiliated. And it doesn't even make sense. This is doll world. You've been here how long? 64 years? You don't know by now that that's hard plastic and you are going to get hurt? Huh? I guess the whole logic is, well, well you know, men are, they do stupid shit when they're trying to impress a girl. But that's like saying a guy would go into shark infested waters knowing damn well he will be eaten just to impress a girl. That's like, shut up. They're not that goddamn stupid. Anyway, he's hurt because he's a little bitch. Um, we got Dr. Barbies. They fix him up. During the whole scene, the Barbies come off oddly patronizing. There's no genuine concern for his well-being. When he talks about his job being beach. And what a good job you do at beach. It's like giving a head pat to a child for a really bad drawing. It's just like, you did just a good job, you dumb fuck. Which is weird because wouldn't Barbie Land be harmonious and nice? You'd think they would love and support each other no matter what and gas each other up no matter what. But it seems that privilege is only reserved for the Barbies and not the Kens, or maybe just not that Ken. But you know, it's that type of movie, a bad one. If I wasn't severely injured, I would beat you off for right now, Ken. I'll beat you off with you any day, Ken. Anyone who wants to beat him off has to beat me off first. I will beat both of you off at the same time. You get it? They're talking about stroking your dick. It's not funny. Ryan Gosling is good, but the script is not. <laughs> They're trying very hard to shine through garbage and it's getting, it's re it's really tough. A smash cut to a party at Barbie's crib. Everybody's dancing, some corny ass music. Ryan Gosling's Ken looks like a fucking serial killer. 
in the corner, just like scowling, scowling. Which me, brings me to another question. Why in the fuck is he jealous? There's so many other Barbies to choose from. So many beautiful, successful, accomplished Barbies. And he keeps fixating on this one. And not just him though, like everyone seems to be like on her. They're not pairing off with their other Barbies. They all seem to be trying to get with Margot Robbie's Barbie instead of like spreading themselves out and having their own separate girlfriends. Like, I don't understand why. And Ken is enraged by this. And keep in mind, children are playing with these dolls. Children. And then suddenly Barbie comes out her mouth with some crazy shit. Do you guys ever think about dying? Now, I like this part. I think it's the only legitimately funny part. The abruptness of childlike curiosity. You know, if you got kids, like they suddenly come in the room and asking like, what's a lesbian? What's a decapitation? And it's so abrupt where you're just like, where the fuck did you learn that? It, it's good. That shows that there is a child behind this Barbie doll. But then it's ruined by a plot point later on. So I can't even really enjoy it anymore. But we'll get to that. <laughs> Barbie shakes it off and we smash cut smash. <laughs> God! Barbie shakes it off and we smash cut schmear. I keep saying it like schmear. Oh God. Barbie shakes it off and we smash cut smash smash smash. Barbie shakes it off and we smash cut to Ken trying to give her a kiss good night. It starts off wholesome. It starts off nice. Kids are playing with these dolls. They want the romantic factor of Barbie and Ken, but because they're children, they don't quite know what that entails. I thought I might stay over tonight. Why? Because we're girlfriend boyfriend. To do what? I'm actually not sure. Good stuff. But then it takes a turn for the bitter and then it's ruined. I don't want you here. Is it Ken? Ken's just a really good friend. And this is my dream house. It's Barbie's dream house. It's not Ken's dream house, right? <laughs> what happened <laughs> just now? What happened to the scene? It goes from, oh, because we're boyfriend, boyfriend, to, uh, I don't want your trifling ass in my house. What the fuck happened? Like, you've turned Barbie into a 30-year-old eggless bad bitch who thinks the mere presence of a man in her life is going to stifle her independence. Ew. Like, the screenwriter really wants you to know that she's had a problem with men in the past. She really wants you to know. And keep in mind, these are allegedly, so far as we know, are being played with by children. Like the 30 year old eggless hoe uh, she is, she rejects Ken and Ken is like, just, he's fucked. Like he's almost close to having an Elliot Roger moment. And then this creepy psychosexual th 70s thriller music starts playing. <laughs> I can't, I gotta go. What the fuck is this? Mommy, why is Ken saying he's the ultimate gentleman while fucking Barbie's dead corpse? Uh, it's satire, sweetie. <laughs> he ha suddenly has this stalker vibe, and I'm wondering where the fuck did the scene go? Why? And can we talk about how dirty they did Ryan Gosling? in the makeup department. Look at this. The platinum hair that accentuates his already kind of big forehead, the guy liner, the bad pancake makeup with tan combo. He looks like a creepy 50 year old gay magician who shakes his Viagra pills at 20 year old twinks. Like it, <laughs> he looks more like Ken in real life than he does in the fucking movie. According to Barbie, Mattel, and everyone at large, Ken is just an accessory. No kids actually play with him. He's useless. He's trash. Like this is what everybody apparently agrees on. He's like a lone wolf in Barbie land, as are all the other Kens. So where are these feelings of anger, resentment, longing, and frustration? Where are these coming from? Out of the air? From Jesus? Does this low key imply that the Kens are more mentally sentient? than the Barbies? So is that, is that what's being said here? What are you saying, Greta? What are you saying? Okay, that's a little bit scary. If there isn't a Ken being controlled by either another girl or the same girl playing with Barbie, then the Kens are automatons. Literal afterthoughts. Wow, that's a... Ooh, that just got feminist. Was, what was the the one that was not able to be resolved? You thought this could this could really get in the way. Um. Well, luckily we made a crazy enough script that it was literally the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> then 
Smash cut to the next day, and we go through Barbie's same routine again, except everything is fucked up. She wakes up startled. She's a little bit more sluggish than she used to be. Her shower's cold. Her breakfast is burnt. She falls off the fucking roof. So what? A kid just threw her off the fucking roof? And it gets worse. It turns out her feet are no longer arched. They're flat, which seems to really turn on the black Ken. Like, why would you? What are you saying, Greta? What are you saying, Greta? This is a deformity that disgusts every Barbie, even the Ken. Even though he's not really allowed to feel that said disgust for a woman's deformity, because uh, all women are queens. Uh, blah, 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 blah. We're all beautiful, no matter what. Blah, 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 blah. Stop it, Ken. I'm sorry. Gotta have some man hate in there. You know, you gotta have that in there. It's, it, that is vital for a Barbie film. Flat-footed Barbies have been a thing since I was a kid and maybe even further back since the 70s. I mean, I should know. I used to own a flat-footed Barbie. It was part of the Generation Girl line of Barbies. Why is this considered a deformity in their world when flat-footed Barbies exist? So let's do a tally of everything that's acceptable in Barbie land and what isn't so far. Fat bitches, amputees, cripples, good, normal. Pregnant chicks and flat-footed chicks, bad. Okay. So anyway, the other Barbies recommend Margot go see Weird Barbie, played by the great one-note Kate McKinnon. And we know she's weird because she says very sexually inappropriate shit like this. That Ken of yours, he is one nice-looking little protein pot. I'd like to see what kind of nude blob he's packing under those jeans. <gasps> Remember, children are playing with these dolls. She says protein pop, and I'm like... What kid knows what the fuck that means? Because I, I usually associate protein pop with, uh... You know what I mean? Like, come on. Like, come on. So where the fuck does a kid know about that? The character of Ken, or a Ken in the film might be gay. Is, is Barbie Land as inclusive as we'd want the real world to be? It is, but they are all dolls. So they don't actually have sexual orientations because they don't have any organs or reproductive organs we figured one well, nice little protein pot they don't actually have sexual orientations because they don't have any organs i'd like to see what kind of nude blob he's packing under those jeans they don't actually have sexual orientations Ooh. is every barbie straight i mean they would have to be i would assume but girls can be anything they want to be including lesbians <laughs> Not yet, yeah, not lesbian. <laughs> Hell no! You can still leave bad boys to China! <laughs> and isn't this supposed to be a family film? I mean, it is, right? It's supposed to be for everybody? So, Barbie explains to Weird Barbie that she is getting thoughts of death. Thoughts of death! And that her arches are gone. And, uh, you know, that's an issue. So, Weird Barbie explains that she made a rip in the Barbie Land real world space time continual. And it's never explained how not really she basically says oh girl feelings created it the girl who's playing with you she must be sad and her thoughts and feelings and humanness are interfering with your dullness uh but we just, just we just don't know how like why how and why barbie does not know that she's being played with by a child and you have to find the girl who's playing with you playing with me why how did how, how? She knows what Barbie is as a brand. She knows what Mattel is. She knows about the difference she may or may not have had on the real world. We fix everything so that all women in the real world can be happy and powerful. But she doesn't know that she is being played with by a child. This movie is dumb. Like, <laughs> it's dumb. Best if you don't think about it too much. Don't ever think it. It's almost an implication that the demographic this was specifically geared towards, which should have been girls and women, don't think too much about the mechanics of a sci-fi-ish fantasy plot line. They really don't consider the fact that you have a brain, which is one of the reasons I do not like this film. Because there were so many fucking problems. And not everyone's saying how brilliant this is, how much it's, it's gonna win an Oscar. And I'm like, where? <laughs> Bitch, where? Whenever a child plays with a Barbie, her thoughts and her feelings or whatever are basically projected onto the Barbie. Okay? Cool with that. But I'm saying this should have happened before then. All these problems, the lack of arches, thoughts of death. Thoughts of death! And the emotional shifts. This should have happened before. 
right? Because Barbie has been a thing for 64 years. We have the JFK assassination, Vietnam War, civil rights movement, 9-11, not to mention non-world event related shit like child abuse, child neglect, divorce, poverty, self-esteem issues, body image issues, puberty, and only now, only now, now have these problems arose in Barbie land. They really don't respect the intelligence of their female audience. They don't. I ended my relationship of two years. Women are using the Barbie movie as a litmus test to evaluate their male partner's views on feminism. You're a dumbass motherfucking piece of shit. I just realized that the Barbie movie is a litmus test. The Barbie test. Said she broke up with her boyfriend after he angrily rejected many of the feminist ideals of the Barbie film. Hope you understand you are stupid as a rape, but If you go see it with a guy who's like, Ken did nothing wrong, then you know that you need to get rid of him and if he doesn't like barbie you're a dumbass motherfucking piece of shit if we all collectively decide to raise the bar they'll have no choice but to adapt this man is quoting the fucking barbie movie on my first trap how many women have had to go on a date with a dude and have to sit there and listen to the nuance about fight club and you get to ask him what do you think about the barbie movie and watch those wheels turn I cannot wait. Melanie Butler hopes straight women use the movie to get a read on the men they're seeing. She recommends Gone Girl for this as well. They weren't wrong. <laughs> so who's really the societal failure in this scenario? Mattel or us? And somehow, like, they're blaming Barbie for this. Like, that's a, also an ongoing trend in this film. People are just blaming Barbie for shit. But if you ask me, you had something to do with this, too. Me? Because this movie is a dedication to Barbie, not not a deconstruction. Like, nah, 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 nah. So anyway, Morpheus gives Neo a choice. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Weird Barbie gives a stereotypical Barbie a choice. Either you can stay in Barbie land and go back to how everything was before, or you can take this ugly fucking sandal and discover the mysteries of the universe. But no, turns out Weird Barbie never wanted to really give her a choice. She gave her the illusion of choice to give her a sense of control. Like how feminists give you the illusion of choice between being a miserable boss ass bitch and being a happily married family woman when they really just want you to be the miserable boss ass bitch. I'm not adventure Barbie, I'm stereotypical Barbie. I'm like the Barbie you think of when someone says, think of a Barbie. Uh, if someone asked you to name a Barbie, they would think of one from a specific line of Barbies. They would think of one that either they had as a kid or a friend had or family member or a commercial they'd seen over the years. Who the fuck responds to the question, think of a Barbie, with stereotypical blonde? They are all stereotypical Barbie with the exception of fat bitch, one arm, and uh, wheels. This is what you set up in the beginning of the film. All of these women are Barbie and Barbie is all of these women. Keep up with your own screenwriting. So Ugly Barbie forces a stereotypical Barbie to go on this journey, find this girl, do something to fix you, her, whatever. It's not really specified. You're not gonna think about it anyway. Just feel. So she's on her way. You'll get to see all the good work we've done to fix the world. All those grateful, powerful women who owe their wonderful lives to Barbie. I'll bet every woman will say thank you and give you a really big hug. You know, for a film meant to portray Barbie land as some like wonderful matriarchal paradise with a bunch of strong, independent Barbies, they are stupid. And what is this like low key saying about the creator of Barbie? As if she was so fucking deluded. In the beginning, Barbie just seemed to be consumed with what she was wearing, just clothes. Connie, the whole concept of Barbie was that her clothing would permit the child to pretend they were in a certain kind of activity. The image you were projecting was someone who could play tennis and yeah, go to a prom yes, and, yes. and be a nurse, not yeah. a doctor. I never dreamed of trying to change the world. I wanted to show the world as it is. And at that time, there were no women doctors. Like, what is this saying? What are you doing, Greta? Come on, Greta! They're aware of their impact on the world, but 
unaware that it's completely non-existent. When in actuality, they've not only made no difference in the world, it's very likely they've hindered progress and spread more misery and hatred. So not unlike modern activism. I would like to believe that was a purposeful message, but I don't think it was. Unintentionally based. Barbie's on the road to salvation with Ken in tow. Turns out he snuck in because one of the Kens bet him to. You can't make me look uncool in front of Ken. Ken's not cool! He is to me. You're just gonna slow me down. So yeah, they go car, rocket ship, all this other shit and then boom they're in the real world on those little neon rollerblades that everyone remembers because reference which is further indication that they should have gone for the 90s barbie aesthetic for the film because there's more variety in that their outfits don't match the motif of Barbie land, which is going for more of a 60s vibe. But anyway, just go with it because fuck it. Barbie's in the real world and as soon as she gets there, we are bombarded with message. Just message, message, message. The only way she can interact with humanity is just sexual harassment. Everybody like gawks at her and she's afraid, but then everyone admires Ken and just like looks at him with admiration. He doesn't really get any attention. And then all of a sudden he's on Venice Beach and people notice him. And then also Barbie's getting this other attention on her, which she's never had before. And it was surreal because we were shooting this fiction. And then, then, then there was like another layer where people were noticing Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie on Venice Beach and everyone who went by Ryan would high five him and say like, right on man, you look great in neon. And Margot, they just look at her and they yeah. like look her up and down and then move on. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's, it's happening. happening. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm gonna pause right there just to interject for a minute. Uh, Greta, what do you expect men to do in that situation? Men are notoriously twitchy and nervous around attractive women, but they're comfortable around a man that they can relate to. I mean, the literally me joke isn't just a joke or a meme. I mean, there are men who actually identify with Ryan and see him as, as very approachable and nice and they relate to him and they look up to him. They see him as something attainable, but Margot Robbie? Not so much. As I said, men are notoriously nervous around beautiful women. They're not going to speak directly in public to beautiful women, especially not in front of a Hollywood director who scrutinizes normal human behavior on national fucking television. They just look at her. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, she's honestly implying that men are, were just being creepy because they didn't walk up to Margot Robbie and act friendly with her. And let's be real, she'd be saying the same thing if they did. Oh, you know, oh, my movie is like, it's bringing out the sexism because men are going up to Margot Robbie and saying, oh, and acting nice. <laughs> so any men who have seen the Barbie film and think that the movie and by extension Greta Gerwig is somehow on your side, she isn't. She's just another Hollywood feminist who thinks you're a creepy weirdo. The sexualization is happening in real time, man. Speaking of which. A few moments later. Were his abs real? Yes, they're yeah. real. That's what he looks like. <laughs> he looks like a Ken doll. I know. He's, he's I just, thought they were painted on. No, no, no. Beautiful. No, that's just him. It's wild. Lots of cunts. Despite a couple like stereotypical gay characters who kind of ogle him. But that's fine because that's two men. So, you know, it kind of cancels itself out. Also, the stereotypical gay characters, that's interesting. Oh, love that. Wow. Very interesting. Uh, <laughs> interesting. Like, even gay men are not safe in this film. Oh, and my favorite caveat, like, the white males wearing polo shirts and asking women to smile. Give us a smile, blondie. Brilliant. This is brilliant. It's not overused in media at all. How about a smile for me, huh? Smile. 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 Time's up, Jackie! I'm sure you have a very pretty smile. May I see it? Oh my god, really? Yes, they really did. Smile oh. for me, sweetie, and then she replies, time's up. Smile. Smile. Drop yours! And one of them yells out, you'd be cuter with a smile on your face. Oh my god! <laughs> Now please have mercy and smile. Smile. Drop it. Smile. Drop it now. If this fucking trope doesn't die by 2024, I'm burning down the Hollywood sign. I'm not even playing. Like I'm done with this shit. It's just a cheap and lazy way for female characterization in films. It's so awful. I feel what can only be described as admired and there's no undertone of violence. Mine very much has an undertone of violence. I mean, what are we 
we supposed to gather from this? That men don't get self-conscious? That men's infamous, strong self-image is a reflection of how they're viewed in society? I'm constantly being validated and I feel amazing. Meanwhile, Barbie, i.e. women, have to deal with constant ogling, sexualization, violence, catcalling. Later on in the scene, Barbie spots some construction workers looking for some real female energy, the movie's words, not mine, and she mistakes these big burly pipe laying ass niggas for women for some reason. Ladies, you What are you, retarded? We're just making Barbie look like a moron. Remember, this is a dedication to her. This is not deconstruction. This is not disrespect. We're just making her look stupid because we think it's funny. Oh, you got fries with that? I steak? said you had a hot body. Would you hold it against me? Is that a mirror in your pocket? Baby, you are I can see myself in your shorts. Like, this is catcalling dialogue from 1975. This is really bad. Barbie acknowledges that they're being uh, sexual towards her, and she tells them that she and Ken do not have genitals. Which, like, by how would she know what genitals are? Because, remember, at this point, we think she's being played with by children. <laughs> I mean, if, even if you were to take that whole aspect away, she is still Barbie and still made specifically for the use of children. And so she naturally has, like, this naive wholesomeness about her. So, yeah, why, she, why does she fuck she know what dicks are? Yeah, you're thinking too much, Lauren. You're a girl. You don't have a fucking brain. Fuck it. Barbie kind of, like, is kind of weirded out by this world. It's, it's just so male. male. And then Ken kind of rebuffs that with everything seems kind of reversed here. The real world should not be reversed from Barbie land. It should be middle ground of Barbie land. Otherwise, you just make the real world look like a cartoonish patriarchal hellscape. Oh, wait, that's exactly what they do. She gets sexually assaulted, defends herself, and then she's the one arrested for defending herself. And then when she gets booked, she is then sexually harassed again by the cops who booked her. A pretty blonde white woman gets sexually assaulted, defends herself, and then she's the one that goes to jail. The real world, everybody, <laughs> where real world things happen. Whatever we turn in as the script, people are going to be like, are you insane? You can't make this, um, which is always, I think, a good sign. <laughs> and then her and Ken go to a boutique, steal clothes, which why wouldn't Barbie have her own like little arsenal of clothing? Like she has this whole armoire or like a suitcase she carries around with her and she just pulls out any article of clothing she wants. And that could be a nice little gag. But no, she has to steal clothes. <laughs> and then the boutique owner chases her down, which would not happen in real life LA. Because in LA, they would just let you snatch and grab. But then she's a arrested again and then sexually harassed by the same two cops again real world shit guys people are gonna be like are you insane you can't make this so barbie has come to an impasse she needs to find this girl and she's really confused about how to do it so she kind of like sits down and kind of thinks for a minute and of course they make ken look like a fidgety six-year-old and he well what am i supposed to do mommy mommy and she tells him to go fuck off somewhere and during this whole fuck off sequence he goes to Century City in LA. Uh, that's supposed to have some kind of significance. I don't know, whatever. This is the sequence where Ken discovers the patriarchy. There's gyms and there's masculine men. And there's men for coats and there's horses and there's big trucks and shit. Ken watches as like this executive guy dismisses some woman and like, oh yeah, just get out of here, bitch. I'm a powerful white guy. He's getting a view of patriarchy through this. And I'm thinking like, I mean, he did just witness his own would-be girlfriend get sexually assaulted. So what line developed on his brain in that moment? Like, if he had seen a woman get raped in, like, an alleyway, would he have been like, Oh my god, we could take it from him now? Great! <laughs> so Barbie sits on this bench and closes her eyes and... <laughs> menstruates. She hones in on the girl who's playing with her, like, her brain is fucking cerebro. This upper-middle-class girl's life is just so tragic that she starts crying it affects her so much it affects her so much she starts looking around at the world and seeing its beauty gays single mothers and a heterosexual couple that are miserable of course because the man's an asshole it'd be more realistic if she saw a fentanyl zombie sodomizing a pelican i would have loved to have seen a juxtaposition between this and maybe her at first being terrified of old people and age spending a little bit more time in the real world and missing interpreting the real world as this hellish horrible place because she's only been there for a couple of days and then maybe as time goes on then she like sees the beauty and everything but no it's, they speed run it as soon as she gets there sexually assaulted goes to jail for being sexually assaulted steals shit then gets arrested again sexually assaulted in jail then sits on a bench menstruates looks around at vague shit and an old lady and then suddenly she gets the nuance of the world
That's lazy. <laughs> that is fucking lazy. Last Action Hero did this way better. You can't play chicken in real life. You'll crash. You are gonna die. Jack! <laughs> Uh, I wonder if you'd help me test a theory. Sure, what can I do for you? Well... I've just shot somebody. I did it on purpose. I said I have murdered a man and I want to confess. Hey, shut up down there! We talked. I mean, I never just talked to a woman before. It's neat. And, and maybe... Shh. What's that? Mozart, you like classical music? I don't know. I think I will. Wow. A fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger movie from the 90s did this better. Embarrassing. <laughs> so Smash got to Mattel headquarters where they catch wind of Barbie and Ken's existence in the real world. And that's where we're introduced to the CEO played by Will Ferrell, who says that Barbie and Ken's existence in our world could have a catastrophic effect. This is also where we're introduced to America Ferrera's character, but she doesn't really have a character. So far, she's, she's just some chick who draws pictures of Barbie. I wish it went any deeper than that, but it really doesn't. <laughs> Somehow Barbie figures out where this fucking kid that she's supposed to find goes to school. Uh, we get a little bit more man hate. <laughs> like I have fear with no specific object. What is that? It's anxiety. I have it too. They're just awful at this age. I feel amazing. <laughs> That's because kids don't take it out on the dads. I don't know. I, I don't. I just don't know what the fuck this movie is doing. We're introduced to the kid who is the daughter of America Ferrera's character. We'll get to that. And she is, for lack of a better word, a twat. <laughs> She's such a twat that Barbie needs a buffer before she even gets to her. Barbie introduces herself to her and her friends and the fucking little girl proceeds to go on this feminist rant about how Barbie has ruined her life, which people who defend this film have told me it's supposed to be comedic. It's supposed to be making fun of people like this um no because there's nothing funny about it it's completely humorless it's just a girl ranting to a fucking woman about her very existence in her life the idea of someone thinking that way is ridiculous but it's not really in itself funny even ruth handler the creator of barbie thinks it's ridiculous i think the main criticism of barbie is no woman can ever look like barbie anatomically that young girls will eventually be dissatisfied with their own bodies. Many women have a problem with their own bodies as they grow older. I cannot uh, believe that the doll causes that. The only one who doesn't think it's ridiculous is Greta Gerwig. Barbie was invented in 1959. Sometimes she's been incredibly ahead of culture, but then at the same time, she had a body that if you were like a human woman with that body, over. You, yeah. you wouldn't be able to stand yeah. up. So yeah. like, that's not great. That we're not gonna shy away from the problematic parts of this. I felt like not only did we have to make arguments that were true, yes. not just, he you know, here's the, the, the potential issues. Like these are true things she's saying. Yeah. Fascist. You want to have the character who is voicing those things that people have found problematic over the years. And coming from a character who's smart, fascist, and knows what she's talking about, fascist, but that it can live in both ands. Yeah. Like yeah. that can be true and it can also be all this other stuff. So uh, no, it's not supposed to be a funny scene. The end part where she yells fascist, fascist at her might have been supposed to be funny, but the rest of it was was not. And this is my opinion. I don't know if Greta Gerwig has made anything else funny, but she is not good at comedy, or at least not comedy in these types of films. She's just not. It's just not, it's not funny. If you make fun of feminists or social justice warriors or overly progressive people, there has to be a joke. You can't just show them being idiots and then expect people to just laugh. Earlier in the day, another group stopped tankers on a busy A road. Infuriating violence. What, what, are, what are they achieving? Well, what they're saying is they want maximum disruption to stop the government extracting oil and gas. Yeah, but that's cooking oil. <laughs> when reality becomes way more comedic than fiction, something is horribly wrong. I mean, they're still on this kick that she's the Barbie that does nothing, knows nothing, ain't nothing, but she's like the mother of all Barbies. She is the very first Barbie. Without her, there would be no other Barbies and there would be no Barbie land. So what the fuck are we doing? Why are you diminishing this character in her own 
film. She makes Barbie cry and she runs away like a shrinking violet. If this is supposed to be satirical, if this is not a deconstruction, if this is not just another humiliation of an IP, why in the fuck isn't Barbie fighting back against this little... The, against this little squirt. It's not hard to roast a child. It really isn't. Sorry, no, do you know what time it is? No, I do not. <laughs> okay. Also the chubby chick, most normal character in the real world. There's this whole montage of Ken going around asking for jobs on the sole basis that he is a man. Now I would, once again, this is another sequence that you think, is this supposed to be satirical? Are, are they satirizing how modern feminism is and how one dimensional they're thinking of the world is like yeah only stupid people think being a man guarantees you success and happiness like yeah uh, yeah but then they fucking ruin it you guys are clearly not doing patriarchy very well we're doing it well yeah we just uh hide it better now shut the fuck up what are you trying what are you saying greta what are you doing greta so yeah we're back with barbie being a punk ass bitch and more on funny jokes she thinks i'm a I don't control the railways or the flow of commerce. Oh, shut up, nigga. Mattel's motorcade rolls up and then they ask her to come with them. And then more terrible script. I've got to talk to somebody in charge. Don't Everybody care. Don't care. Here. Still don't Men care. Like Men look at me like I'm an object. You are quite literally an object. You are an object used for the pleasure of others. Fucking stop it. So anyway, Ken, because they just love making him look like a punk bitch, uh, he is reluctant to go save Barbie or even go with her at all because patriarchy is way more important than a woman's safety. Ha ha ha! Fuck you. So he goes back to Barbie land to introduce patriarchy and she goes to Mattel. The CEO, Will Ferrell, tells her you can go back to Barbie land uh, through a portal that's in a Barbie box. So you got a bunch of patriarchal men trying to put a woman in a box. Much more subtle. Barbie asks to see uh, who the CEO is because despite being exposed to this patriarchal world, she's still under the impression that things are run by women, even though this is this is clown world. This is not real world. This is clown world. Even though men are like, there's a boardroom right in front of them and she would have been explained this she still asks oh are there any women in charge because we gotta hammer the hammer at home that barbie is out of touch and stupid like the whole purpose of the scene is to show that oh yeah this is just men in charge in mattel it's just men old patriarchal mattel got nothing but men on the board despite the fact in the real world that half the fucking board is women Ooh. why would you lie about that because <laughs> can look them up and be like, oh, half the board is women. Why? Why? <laughs> and the only conclusion I could come to is that it's a way to make themselves look more pious. Because keep in mind, for the past few years, Mattel has been trying to rebrand as some kind of like woke company. They have non-binary Barbie. They got the cripple Barbie, fat Barbie. Barbie with Down syndrome was created to allow even more children to find a doll that represents them. It can bring tears to my eyes just to see that Barbie has Down syndrome. Hey, look, see, we are woke. And we show this by blatantly fucking lying and erasing the women who make our company what it is. Hmm? Make it make sense? What do you mean by this, Greta? Women are the freaking foundation of this very long phallic building. None of what's in this scene is funny. They're just saying things. None of this is funny. Greta's given a lot of us a chance to kind of improvise and encourages all of that. I mean, her, her main thing is like, if you have something better, please, I'll take it. I'm the son of a mother. I'm the mother of a son. I'm, I'm the nephew of a woman aunt. Some of my best friends are Jewish. They didn't have anything better. The CEO is an Israeli. Why what does that joke mean? What I'm trying to say is get in the box, you Jezebel. That should have been funny. Why wasn't it funny? They try to put her in the box, but Barbie's like, fuck this. I feel anxiety as a woman <laughs> and then she runs the thought of all these like suited ceo businessmen running after like this blonde pink wearing bimbo the idea of it is kind of funny the actual scene isn't because this is supposed to be the real world why is everything more cartoony than it is in barbie land why? So anyway, Barbie ends up in this very vast, sterile hallway and she happens upon, and you're not going to believe this, the ghost of Ruth Handler, the creator of Barbie, played by Rhea Perlman, which is 
in my opinion, not good casting. I think it should have been played by someone like Ellen Burstyn. She fits her look a little bit more. Or Gina Rollins. Like, Rhea Perlman has like these like sinister fucking eyebrows. <laughs> she looks like too intense in some scenes. I'm just like, calm down, Rhea. Also, they play up Ruth Handler as like this sweet old lady when the real Ruth Handler comes off way more slick and business minded. That's the sense I got from her from watching a few interviews. But she's played as some one dimensional magical old lady just to further the plot along. I don't like it. I think it's kind of tacky puppeteering a dead woman who probably wouldn't have liked this film. Like just my opinion. But I don't think she would have liked this film. A real Perlman directs her to an exit leading to America Ferrero. She's waiting there in her stylish yet rugged and reasonably affordable Chevy Blazer. It's basically a commercial in the movie. It's li literally ad space for a car. One legendary icon deserves another. Get in! Steve Barbie in theaters now which explains why it's low energy and very poorly shot. I mean, this movie is actually ripe with product placement. All throughout the film, they're pimping out their ugly cousin Barbie dolls. So they weren't selling. So they just like, oh, here you go, put them in here. Hopefully someone will buy them in association with this film. Uh, they won't. <laughs> Nobody's buying that shit. But during the commercial, we are explained by America Ferreira that she's been sad and lonely because of a spat she's having with her daughter. In other words, the daughter's being a cunt for no reason. And it really upsets the mother. So instead of actually dealing with it and talking to her daughter, patching things up, she instead plays with a doll to escape her responsibilities. Now I'm coming to the conclusion because I think this is what they want me to think. America Ferreira, the mother, represents Barbie fans. And the daughter represents all of the shitty opinions, all the wrong opinions about Barbie. That's what it's looking like so far. Also in the scene, it's flippantly said that Barbie is an idea, which is also a tagline from one of the trailers. And I think it's in the movie somewhere. Like I said, that she is an idea. Keep that in mind because it's going to be important later. So all those memories that Barbie was menstruating, I guess, were actually the mother's memories and not the daughter's memories. How the fuck do you mistake the mother... Whatever. You'd think she'd be able to feel the difference between a middle-aged woman's emotions and a teenage girl's. But I guess, oh, that's probably just another deep message from Greta Gerwig. We basically are like a hive mind. We all have the same emotions. Like middle-aged woman, 13-year-old girl, same shit. The struggle is real in all of us. And then Frick, Frack, and Frump are on their way to Barbie land with the same neon rollerblades. Fun, yes, reference. The daughter, who is basically the only logical one here, as unlikable as she is, she suggests that maybe they call her father to tell him where they are, or at least let him know that they are all right. America Ferrera is like, nah, nah, he'll be fine. And then they do this family guy cutaway to their living room where he's learning Spanish on his phone. He's just so fucking oblivious. He doesn't care about where his daughter and wife are. And America Ferrera is such a ditz. She doesn't care that her husband doesn't know where the fuck they are. Uh, like, how is this supposed to be funny? And remember, like, she's supposed to represent Barbie fans. She's supposed to represent Barbie, Barbie fans. So Barbie fans are negligent bitches who kidnap their children to go to another dimension and who completely disregard the feelings and concern of their spouses. Hey, Greta Gerwig made this shit, not me, okay? So we're off to the races, and of course we need a little bit more man hate. That's because Ken is totally superfluous. <laughs> just to spice it up, you know, just spice it up. The makers of Mrs. Dash brings Mrs. Andre. And then we smash cut back to Venice Beach where Will Ferrell and the CEOs are hot on their trail. This could mean extremely weird things for our world. Nothing any of our collective imaginations could ever dream of. A podcast hosted by two wise trees. I honestly don't know how anyone could have liked this film. What the fuck? Will Ferrell's CEO character is meant to poke at corporate performative wokeisms, but the jokes just don't fucking hit. This should be the comedy hit of the summer and it just fucking isn't. And I don't mean money made. That's not what I'm talking about. It should be genuinely funny. It's not even just like, oh, this movie is for girls. Only girls would understand these jokes. It's like no one would find this funny. It's just mouth farting. These jokes are gonna get fucking old by the time this comes out on streaming. 
In fact, they probably already are old. Barbie and the illegitimates finally make it to Barbie land and they notice a little something weird, like men playing sports and having confidence and not being dismissive and petty to each other. It's horrific. Where do the Kens stay? I don't know. That is the only time the power imbalance between the Kens and the Barbies is directly mentioned. Because you get a whole college feminist dissertation strapped to a brick which then hits you directly in the face when it comes to all the other messaging, all the feminist shit. But when it comes to anything involving men, it's kind of like, you have to really dig. You yourself, as an individual, have to see that for yourself. It's like it was totally by accident. I don't believe for a second that anything was deliberate on that front. It turns out the Kens have completely himboed Barbie land. And honestly, uh, I dig it. <laughs> because, and this may shock a lot of people, characters that are like proactive and do things that have like relatable traits are more well liked than characters who don't. That's why nobody gives a shit about Margot Robbie as Barbie. Everyone cares more about Ryan than her. She's got nothing going on up here. But see, that's deliberate because this is a deconstruction and you can't deconstruct a character without shitting on it. So we smash cut back to Mattel and it turns out the Mojo Dojo Casa House is actually selling like fucking hotcakes. Little boys are going crazy over it, despite the fact that it is still pink. Hmm. Huh. Strange how they didn't repaint it like blue because, you know, patriarchy, either that's an oversight or uh, it's supposed to mean something. So now we know events in Barbie land affects Mattel's merchandise. Okay. So why didn't a bunch of sad existential Barbies start popping up as soon as she started to change? I know what you're going to say. Oh, they bring it up later with that little cutaway. But here's the thing. Different dolls pop up due to her personality change. Their merchandise should have changed earlier, which means they should have been alerted to something going on in Barbie land earlier, but they weren't. Not until it was reported that she was in the real world. So I hate this film. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. The movie's fucking bad. <laughs> but anyway, we get more of a window into uh, Ken's patriarchy. You know, you got all the Barbies and maid outfits serving them brewski bears. Like, saying the same things multiple times with different words is just so fucking funny. Brewski beer, mojo dojo casa house. I mean, shut the fuck up. This is Barbie land. I can't just do it in a day. Literally and figuratively watch me. Behind you. It only took him a day to brainwash an entire matriarchy. And you have to think about what that entails. Like, what did he do? Did he beat the fuck out of him? Or he, did he just like gather everyone around and like just talk? Like, what happened? What happened? We just explained to them the immaculate, impeccable, seamless garment of logic that is patriarchy and they crumbled. That's not enough. And it's not even funny. Oh my God. This is like in the 1500s with the indigenous people in smallpox. They had no defenses against it. What is the implication being made here? That women are completely defenseless against a man with an idea? Unintentionally based. What are you saying? What are you doing, Greta? Barbie Land's horrifying take on patriarchy is women being hospitable, pleasant to others, and acknowledging the Ken's existence. All the men have self-respect, they're happy, and the women are happy too. I think the only reason why we're supposed to think this is a bad thing is because they're wearing maid outfits. But if they were wearing what they usually wear, would anyone really care? Why didn't the Barbies fight back? Was there any pushback? And if not, why wasn't there? They don't have equally effective ideas that could have counteracted theirs? What the fuck happened here? I think that's a valid fucking question. Even if it's just like a funny cutaway explaining it. But there isn't anything. You're basically saying that the Barbies are stupid. Remember, this is not a deconstruction. This is honoring Barbie and the Barbie brand and the fans. This is not a hateful, petty deconstruction. You will love this film. And you will buy all the merchandise that comes with it, you fucking seals. But the Kens aren't 100% in control because the following day there's going to be a vote on how to change the constitution to put it solely in the Kens' favor. I fail to realize why I should give a fuck. <laughs> Why should I care? They're taking their power back. They're in power. Because if the movie wanted to be subversive and be honest, they would have just let the Kens take over. I mean, think about it. Barbie's supposed to be the protagonist. Ken getting back at her. Why do we, should we feel sorry for her? She's crying. So what? So what? Every night is boys' night. You got knocked the fuck out. This all kills me. This movie pretends 
that this is a protagonist that we are supposed to root for. And whenever she cries, we cry. And we're supposed to understand her plight. But I don't, I'm not fucking understanding her plight at this point. What character sh- does she even have? Because she's not really the wholesome Barbie that we grew up with. And the existential shit is just like basic bitch Instagram queefing bullshit that we've seen. Like live, laugh, love. Who cares? We continue the blame of Barbie. Maybe you wished us. Maybe it's your fault, Barbie. Like she explicitly says she didn't want anything to change in Barbie land. She thought everything was perfect. So where is she at fault? Maybe the implication is that she secretly wanted a different life from Barbie land, but she wouldn't have wanted it in the first place if it hadn't been for the rip in the membrane of the Barbie world, real world space time continuum. What are we blaming her for? What are you blaming her for, Greta? So her transition from doll to fully realized human has a lot less impact. Why wasn't it enough that she brought joy and happiness to children everywhere? This is the same fucking problem people had with Toy Story 4. How Woody suddenly didn't want to be a child's toy anymore because uh, she hurt her pussy. I want something more out of life. I'm having a midlife crisis. Shut the fuck up. You're a doll. So Barbie completely gives up. She wants to wait until one of the leader-oriented Barbies fixes everything. And I'm like, sweetie, if they couldn't fight a blonde doofus with some half-baked ideas. They're not going to be able to do it now. Please, just leave me here. Just leave me. Go back to your messed up world and just leave me to mine. Barbie literally has no reason to like their world because the screenwriter gives our world, the real world, no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Other than one old woman sitting on a fucking bench. Another thing, like, why not? Because you can't fix these two. They're, they're unfixable. They're cunts. My thing is, why don't they just give the little Barbie totem from their world that they were playing with, why not just give the doll away to someone who's going to love it and appreciate it and lift Margot Robbie's Barbie out of her little funk so everything could be in the process of going back to normal? But no, they never think of this because the screenwriter or screenwriters didn't think of it. <laughs> then we wouldn't have a feminist plot. Then we wouldn't be able to shit on Barbie fans. Then we wouldn't be able to shit on the Barbie brand in general. So we, yeah, we can't really do that. That's too wholesome. That's too good. Cause our writing team are two fucking cynical Hollywood assholes. It's time to run out and get the new depression Barbie. She wears sweatpants all day and night. She spent seven hours today on Instagram looking at her estranged best friend's engagement photos while eating a family sized bag of Starburst. And now her jaw is killing her. That's it's okay, but they forgot one little detail. Now she'll start an OnlyFans to replenish her fleeting sense of self-worth before throwing in the towel when her content leaks on Reddit. We cut right back to the CEOs on the way to Barbie Land. They're on this like really long tandem bike. You'd think the Mattel people would have their own special portal to Barbie Land to get there like an instant. But they don't. <laughs> because it wouldn't be funny. You know what would have been funnier? If we saw how they all fit on a fucking rocket ship. Some of them died because they fell off. That would have been funny. That would have been funny. <laughs> so the irrelevants are back on the road to the real world. Disappointed that a fucking Barbie doll couldn't enrich their lives in some way. Even though it's the, on them to enrich her life. Uh, by maybe giving the doll to someone else. <laughs> Whatever. Um, And Alan shows up. <laughs> Alan snuck out of Barbie land to get to the real world because he's sick of being um, treated nicely. Yeah, and then he just randomly starts a fight with a construction crew. This scene gives soy boys hope that if you hate masculinity enough, you can randomly beat up a group of men. <laughs> like, this movie is either self-reporting or it's the best satire ever. I think it's just self-reporting. Honestly, I can't help but believe this is nothing but like a feminist deconstruction because, well, look at the, look at the fans. I've been seeing them say shit online like, every girl wants an Alan, not a Ken. I'm like, girl, Alan will roofie you. Alan is a psychopath. Wow. It's best just to kill him. Don't let him go to Barbie land or the real world. Just put him the fuck down. While Alan is beating the fuck out of people for no reason, basic bitch mother and daughter are giving themselves pats on the back for being basic bitches. Because she drew pictures of Barbie with her head down, that, that means she's dark and weird and special and like, Okay, whatever. Like, no. If we had enough time with these characters, we would have picked up on America Ferreira's, like, I need to be perfect like a doll mentality. But they don't really do anything in this film. Half the time, they're just sitting around looking at Barbie, be Barbie, observing the environment around them. You could take them out of the movie and it wouldn't really make a fucking difference. I mean, except for that one scene. 
we'll get to that anyway back to barbie land where weird barbie has taken margot robbie back to her crib they've been trying to deprogram all the other barbies to take back barbie land from the kens and weird barbie asks a really stupid question why didn't the brainwashing work on you well maybe because they didn't try to brainwash her unless you're implying that ken just standing around having confidence and saying shit that self-affirming to men is in itself brainwashing. Exposure to the real world must have made me immune. She's immune to the patriarchy because she was exposed to the patriarchy. And why would she even believe that's the truth? I'm not stereotypical Barbie pretty. Will you please stop fucking calling yourself that? You're all stereotypical Barbie. Beautiful, thin, fashionistas with a lot of jobs. Barbie somehow feels inadequate because she isn't interesting. But if, see, if the screenwriter gave a fuck, she would know that it's a child's imagination that makes her interesting. And even then, like I said, there's no such thing as stereotypical Barbie because all Barbies share the same wacky themes and costumes. Like whenever a white Barbie got something, that means the other color Barbies also got the same theme because it would have been a bad business plan otherwise. So if Barbie is a selfish, neurotic, basic bitch, with no personality, then the irrelevance are the culprit, which means they should give the Barbie to a kid who will give a shit. You know, give her back her spirit and her joy because the only way she can have spirit and joy and personality is through the imagination of a child, which neither of you really are. Yeah, but no, just say she's pretty, which she is, and smart, which she's not, because Barbie has been an idiot throughout this entire film, while also spouting generic pity me feminist rhetoric bullshit. It is literally impossible to be a woman. You have to be thin, but not too thin. You're supposed to love being a mother, but don't talk about your kids all the damn time. You have to answer for men's bad behavior which is insane but if you point that out yeah. you're uh, shut when you when you think about it out. which would only disable her more as a woman because you offer no fucking solutions other than calling her pretty and smart so don't even tell me for a second that this film is not woke and is not feminist and is not this because if they actually gave a fuck if they actually knew what they were doing the scene in the car where she is reconnecting with her own daughter and having a moment would have snapped Barbie out of it immediately. But it didn't. Instead, it was this fucking speech. But you know what? I'm the one misinterpreting this film. And not only does it pep up Margot Robbie's Barbie, it deprograms every Barbie. And I'm thinking, why? It's like, oh, it's impossible to be a woman. Now become empowered over your impossibility. <laughs> like, what fucking sense does that make? By giving voice to the cognitive dissonance required to be a woman under the patriarchy, you robbed it of its power. Shut up. Bitch. Did they accidentally imply that the patriarchy is just something that's in women's heads? That it's just self-inflicted first world neurosis? Because that's actually correct. Unintentionally based. So the Barbies come up with a plan to take back Barbie land, pretending to be helpless in public so the Kens will help them, pretending not to know about financial shit in front of them, and asking about well-known legendary films so men will explain them because being a cinephile as a man is bad. So yeah, you got a lot of fucking nerve, Greta Gerwig. See, I expect you to just laugh at a movie reference for being a movie reference, but men who like The Godfather are trash. I am beginning to think that these experiences are not universal. I'm getting a, a vibe, okay, okay, that these are like the regular Hollywood douchebags that Greta Gerwig and people like her have to deal with on a regular basis. So naturally, they think that all men are this way. Uh, like, I know you got casting couched a couple times, but trust me, there are men that are human. <laughs> the Kens even have a more eclectic array of music. Like, what is that, Sting? Like, the police? Like... Come on, bruh! I'm sorry, where are the downsides of the Kens being in charge? Technically, under patriarchy, women try to fit unrealistic beauty standards. So I was asking myself, why is this bitch still fat? And then I see her sitting next to a black guy, and then I get my answer. <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> if that was supposed to be a joke, Greta Gerwig, bravo. The re-brainwashing works, of course, because it, it would have to. And we're down to the final stage of the process. Barbie has to seduce 
Ryan's Ken. And she's worried about him not liking her anymore, which is like, since when you give a fuck, bitch? <laughs> they go back and forth with how she feels about this moment. First, she doesn't give a fuck. Then she treats him like a child. Then she hates him. Then she thinks he's irrelevant. Now Sunny's like, what if he doesn't like me anymore? What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, we need to put this in here. We need to show some kind of Barbieism. We need to show that her and Ken had something going on, even though they fucking didn't. This doesn't make any sense. Then America Ferreira rightfully reminds her that, yeah, he brainwashed your friends. He took over your whole fucking city. And then Barbie basically says, It's like I'm a woman already. <laughs> That's what it's like. Wow, men mistreat me. I'm a real woman now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this knowledge delights her. Get me the fuck out of here. She seduces him. They go on a date. He starts singing Push by Matchbox 20, uh, which is about a guy in an abusive relationship. I get what you're trying to say. Expressing his emotions through song. But once again, we are supposed to laugh at it not with it. We're supposed to think this is funny. Like you tie this up into a joke about douche bros playing their guitar. Like we're not supposed to sympathize. We're supposed to laugh at him, not with him. And plus he's singing exactly like the lead singer of Matchbox 20. And I'm a little bit angry. Well, which makes me think this is a total piss take on Rob Thomas in the song. The only positive thing I can take from this scene is that Ryan Gosling has pipes. He can fucking sing. He's multi-talented. The best thing about this fucking movie. I might be biased because I actually do like the song, but eh, I don't give a fuck. The tactic here was to make the Kens think they're all being cheated on. So basically they're all supposed to act like flirty whores to make them fragile enough because you know, when men think they're being cheated on, they're such whiny piss baby bitches, masculinity so fragile. But yeah, they all get jealous of each other and it sours the whole community to a point where they all want to go to war with each other instead of the Barbies, because as we all know, when a man is cheated on, he always blames the other man over the person who cheated on them. That's a very male thing to do. This whole thing relies on the Kens to act like women in response to their own jealousy. Instead of doing what patriarchy would have taught them, was to just call them fucking whores and disregard their existence completely. Now, the way I would have done this is that the Kens would have just fought back against the Barbies. They would have gone to some G.I. Joe world or some army toy world, you know, to gather up weapons and come up with strategies and shit. And then they get there and they tell that military or the Joes, whatever, their situation. And the Joes go, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. It seems like it's the Barbies you want to destroy, not each other. Barbies are the ones who are playing you. The Kens come to this realization and then comes like the training and they're getting affirmed and they're manning up and really getting a sense of who they are. And then right before the Barbies take back Barbie land, the Kens along with the Joes burst into the nation's capital and proceed to rip them apart with bullets, wasting every motherfucking Barbie in existence, leaving just nothing left. Everyone's dead, even the two irrelevants. And they take back their home and it fades to black as Matchbox 20's push plays in the background. <laughs> that would have been a real ending. That would have been a happy ending for me. But moving on. Then we're led into that musical sequence that everyone's seen, the I'm Just Ken. It's very ill-placed. It's very sloppily just thrown into the film. I think this should have been shown earlier. Uh, that's just my opinion. I mean, the song's all right. I don't, I don't, don't really care about it past the film. The whole fight scene between the group of Kens is just so fucking whack. And I'm supposed to find this funny, but I can't, I can't. I'm just noticing the black guy with Mattel. Those are some really corporate cornrows. <laughs> Finally, blessedly, the musical sequence ends. They realize they got took and that leads into a weak ass Monty Python reference because remember, guys who like the Godfather cringe. Expecting people to laugh at just references. Base. And so the Barbie, they're in their pink jumpsuits for some reason. And then they vote to take back Barbie lands. Who gives a shit? And the mother and daughter, they love each other now. Inexplicably, we don't care. I don't care. Fuck this film. I can't wait to be done. Oh my God. So anyway, the president tells the Kens, yeah, we took back everything, motherfucker. Uh, no, really, she actually does say motherfucker. That's because they're dream houses, motherfucker. 
<laughs> That's right. Anyway, she says they took back Barbie Land and they disinfected the dream houses, which what does that even mean? They don't sweat. They don't have skin. They don't secrete fluids. They have no body hair. But we need to make a point. And the point is men are disgusting. I never got the impression that Barbie was this sweet, kind soul, especially since her and her society treats Ken's like pieces of shit. I, she apologizes for taking him for granted, not for subjugating him. Keep that shit in mind. She apologizes for like, oh, I'm sorry I didn't fuck you. I'm like, I'm so I'm really sorry I didn't acknowledge you romantically. But what I don't apologize for is keeping you like uh, to a homeless drifter. She tells him the things he thought made him him really aren't him. It's okay for her to have an existential crisis and find meaning in other things in the real world. But he tries to look for his own thing and suddenly he has to change back. Feminists, I mean... Barbies never really have answers. They only nag you to find yourself and do better. This pep talk serves as nothing more than a pacifier to lull him into an illusion of control Ha 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 ha. So he can forget that he's right back where he started. Homeless, bitchless, powerless. Stop! I'm trying to be whatever this is. Maybe all the things that you thought made you you aren't really you. I don't know what to be. I just don't know who I am without you. Tell me what to be. You're Ken. I don't know. Just don't be a dick. But it's Barbie and Ken. There is no just Ken. It's too late. Look at me. I'm such a dick. Maybe it's Barbie and it's Ken. It's never too late to stop being a dick. This is the second fucking movie I've seen where a man is asking a woman what he needs to be. And then the woman having like the dumbest answer possible or no answer whatsoever because she's a fucking idiot. I don't know, just don't be a dick. <laughs> so anyway, Ken realizes that he is Ken, and all the Kens are Ken, and he is Ken, and me or me, Ken is me, I'm me, and me is Ken, is you is, or is you ain't my baby, whatever. <laughs> it's all false empowerment. It's just like, like I said, it's a pacifier to lull them into a sense of control over their lives when they really have none, and they're back where they started, or whatever. We were only fighting because we didn't know who we were. That would have been, actually would have been funny if he had not said a word throughout the entire film. But they had him say shit. So it kind of ruins the effect of what he said. The Mattel board shows up. They had actually had a chance to make a joke about how they all fit in that tiny ass house, but then they ruin it. They don't really make use of the visual gag. <laughs> like I said, Greta Gerwig can't write comedy for shit. I'm sorry. Ah! Oh, Mitch. I thought we discontinued her. Pregnancy is still weird. CEO Will Ferrell talks about how, oh, I've wanted to combat my toxic masculinity too by tickling my whole board. And it's just weird and unfunny. Once again, they don't properly utilize the joke. Because he is a performatively woke CEO, he would not naturally get his own hands dirty doing anything concerning allyship. So what he really should have done in this scene was to order his men to tickle each other and not touch him. Because you gross, I'm toxically masculine. But anyway, Anyway, that is done and then Will Ferrell talks about how we should get Barbie Land back to the way it was and the president says oh well no I don't think it should go back to the way it was no Ken or Barbie should be in the shadows that's just as far as that goes it's just a quick half-assed wrap up they don't acknowledge what actual problems that the Kens and certain characters had they just kind of like, oh, everything will be better now, I swear. How the fuck are you going to fix somebody's problems when you don't acknowledge what the fucking problem is? It's like they don't get how they were put in the shadows in the first place. They're just playing lip service to shit. You know, like a real politician. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people defending this ending. Like, it promotes equality by the end of the film. But, like, what about the narrator's last line, though? Well, the Kens have to start somewhere. And one day, the Kens will have as much power and influence in Barbie land as women have in the real world. That deliberately implies that they still have no power. Because they've already made the point that women in the real world also live under a patriarchy and that they also have no power like I get, when y'all watch movies do y'all really like pay attention to them like listen to them it's like this movie is very vindictive they think just because they hide it with pink pastels and smiles means that 
you can't see it. <laughs> I have an idea. What about ordinary Barbie? She's not extraordinary. She's not president blah, of anything. Blah, or maybe blah, she is. Blah, maybe she's blah, a mom. Blah, maybe she's blah, not. Blah, because it's okay blah, blah, to, to blah, just... Primary reason people play with dolls, watch films, or partake in anything involving imagination is to get away from ordinary. I really dislike this character. She's a neglectful, kidnapping, psycho bitch with little to no character. She's every narcissistic asshole who says, I'm a pathetic schlub who needs to see myself in everything because I'm a pathetic schlub. I understand this is trying to curb Barbie's negative impact on Western society, but this is just a scapegoat for bad parenting. Full stop. This is no different from when people would blame violent video games or Marilyn Manson for their child's negative behavior. If your kid ties up all their self-worth into a doll, you have fucked up. Not the doll. Shows like The Simpsons did fall for this Barbie fear-mongering, but the difference is, is that that era of The Simpsons was hilarious, and no matter how much I disagreed with that message, I was still entertained, and I was still laughing my ass off. Stacy, please, I must have you back. Just come for a ride with me in my mobile command unit. Joe, I told you, it's over. Release me from your kung fu grip. This fucking movie? This movie right here, nigga, is fucking dog shit. Those normal dolls, those real women dolls that they came out with, they weren't selling. That's why they made this film, so they could pimp them out in the film and therefore, therefore get them to sell. So um, the fictional patriarchal CEO is actually right. Then the ghost of Ruth Handler shows up. So you're Ruth Handler, inventor of Barbie. Barbie Land knows of the real world and their effect on it, all bet misguided, but not their creator? Wouldn't they be programmed with the knowledge of their creator by default? I'm... Oh, a woman wrote this. <laughs> a woman wrote it. Who gives a fuck, right? The fact that she, a spirit, can move in and out of Barbie Land at will. You think she'd check up on things? Make sure nothing's going on, you know, like a fucking Ken uprising? You think they'll... Lady who invented Barbie looks like Barbie? <laughs> I'm a five foot nothing grandma with a double mastectomy and tax evasion issues. And like, it's really tacky, especially considering the fact that because of her double mastectomy, she made fake titties for women who had double mastectomies from like cancer and shit like that. She, she actually made a difference in people's lives and they just mention it like it's a fucking joke. I'm ugly because I had my tits cut off due to cancer. Remember, now this movie is supposed to be a dedication. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. And I won't be buying that merch, not even from a bootleg retailer. I just could not give a fuck. There are people who have the Knuff sweaters, but it's so, vin like the messaging behind it is so vindictive. Like, like you're meant to laugh at men for being directionless and identityless. Like, I'd be fine if you, they could make it funny, but they just didn't. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do now. I've always been stereotypical Barbie and- You're supposed to bring joy and imagination to children across the world. Shut the fuck up. They continue their talk in some kind of white void. I don't know, is it heaven? Hell? I know I'm in hell, <laughs> but are they in hell? I don't know. And Barbie asks to be human. Humans only have one ending. Ideas live forever. I wanna be a part of the people that make meaning, not the thing that's made. Now, as remember, was stated before, Barbie is an idea, remember? So Barbie, as an idea, keep that in mind, can't give anyone meaning despite the fact that she is standing in front of the spirits of the woman, cultivated an entire career of enriching the lives of children across the world for 64 fucking years, off of the idea of Barbie. The ideas are eternal. They last forever. So now the idea wants to become human and fallible and eventually become weak and die. Being a human can be pretty uncomfortable. And then you die. <laughs> yeah. And how the fuck is this film supposed to be a celebration of Barbie? Let the past die. Kill it slowly. 
if you have to. So anyway, it goes on and then there's this lame line. Mothers stand still so the daughters can look back and see how far they've come. And I'm like, that's just our mother's walk so we can run, with, but with more words. Like such a fucking pretentious ass line. Ruth Handler, R Ruth Handler basically tells Barbie that she can will herself into existence. Like will herself to be human just by like closing her eyes and feeling... <laughs> menstruation makes you more human anyway <laughs> one of the most annoying Billie eilish songs start playing <laughs> this song makes me laugh i had to go all up and down tiktok learning what people were saying about the film and i found so many tiktoks where it's just barbie text saying some like diluted bullshit and that song it's fucking hilarious. When did it end? All the enjoyment. When did it end? All the enjoyment. When did it end? All the enjoyment. When did it end? All did it end? All the enjoyment. We didn't watch the movie all the way. Oh wait, we did. It didn't make me cry. Oh wait, it did. Oh, they didn't play Billy yet. Oh wait, it did. Barbie, or Black Panther for white bitches, open this weekend. But yeah, she becomes human and says yes. yes, whatever the fuck that means. And then we smash cut to her back in the real world, living with America Ferreira and the daughter and the bitch made husband. And like they're keeping up the learning Spanish stick, which wasn't funny the first goddamn time. Estoy muy orgulloso de ti. Orgulloso. Orgulloso. Is the joke that he's learning Spanish for his wife and daughter, knowing damn well they speak perfect fucking English? Is that the point? Is that what's funny? So not only are you making him look like a terrible father and husband, he's also racist. Yeah, honey, I know when I met you, you spoke perfect English. And I know our child was born and raised in America. But, uh, me es stupido. Me es stupido. They drop Barbie off at this facility. We don't know what it is yet. Until she says this. I'm here to see my gynecologist. And I'm bad like the Barbie. I'm a doll, but I still want to... What the hell was that? Okay. <laughs> um, if this truly was a feminist satire, she would have said, I'm here for my abortion. <laughs> She's so happy to get the procedure. All the hope and life in her eyes with that shit eating grin on her face. Modern feminism made her so ecstatic that her uterus was going to be poked at as a baby was going to be ripped into pieces and sucked out of her womb. Now that would have been some satire for yo ass. Dark, but funny. I mean, that is if you want politics shoved into your Barbie film where it doesn't need it at all. But anyway, that's the, that's it. That's the end of the motherfucking movie. We did it. This is garbage. I hated it. It's just another hollow deconstruction of an IP where the negative opinions about said IP are prioritized over the people who made it what it is. But the debates over whether it is or isn't woke is fucking ridiculous because like i said it is so there's no fucking discussion and two a barbie movie plot should not have politics in the first fucking place so it doesn't even fucking matter this movie would have is trash no matter how you look at it no matter how you slice it woke anti-woke it doesn't matter it's bad. What are these socio-political politics doing in my fucking Barbie film? Get out of here, you fucking yeah. Fuck yeah. Get the fuck out of here! I don't mind there being a sprinkling of socio-political jokes in there, but the whole fucking plot is centered around patriarchy and how that is in Barbie land compared to our world. It completely misses the point of what makes Barbie great and why kids play with the dolls to begin with. It's an insufferable bore of a film. The novelty of this movie is going to wear off as soon as it comes out on streaming. And this is why I say this. Like, yes, it made a billion dollars, but see, that was in theaters. <laughs> that was when you got the theater experience. You sat down with people who were wearing pink just like you and they laughed, therefore you laughed. It's going to hit completely different on streaming. I don't think it's going to have the shelf life that people think it's going to have. <laughs>
people only saw this film is because they wanted to know that they had seen the very first live action Barbie film. And because the marketing, like I said, was genius. That can't be denied that they really manipulated people very well with marketing. I mean, if you like the movie, that's fine. People like shit sometimes. That's fine. But anyway, yeah, that's my review. I'm done. I'm tired. I'm gonna have some banana pudding ice cream and go to bed. Uh, yeah, fuck you, Greta Gerwig. <laughs> Just fu I'm sure you're a nice person in real life, but fuck you. Yeah, I mean, well, it most certainly is a feminist film. How, how so? I, to me, it's like, that's like one slice of the pie. Like, it's so... It's pretty big. It's a, it's a big... <laughs>